Now we're going to talk about pages 5, 6, and 7 from the Claris Lutegaris manuscript, and which has the material for the change of sword, Lutakio Gladii. And uh, this is one of the most confusing uh, sequences in the manuscript, as far as I'm concerned. And I currently have two competing theories as to what this means. Uh, these are my old theory and my new theory. Uh, currently, I like the new theory better, but there are some there are some things about the old theory that make more sense. So the first thing is that uh, change of sword that is above comes from half shield versus underarm. So if I'm an underarm, John is in, in right shoulder. John steps into half shield, and I fall under the sword and shield. When John counterbinds and steps, I'm supposed to change the sword that is above. So my old interpretation is, as John's coming forward, I'm going to seed the bind and step back with my right foot. Then I'm going to let go of the bind here and knock his sword down. This is one of the weaknesses, as far as I'm concerned, that I'm letting go of the bind, which the manuscript tells us over and over again not to do. From here, I do a back edge cut towards John's head, which causes him to pull his buckler towards his head, and without having to change my momentum, I can now just turn my hand and continue forward and cut his arm, which draws his buckler down, and I step in with the shield knock. And it looks a fair amount like what happens in the manuscript. The problems, as I said, are that I'm releasing the bind, and the other problem is that the separation of sword and shield ends up looking nothing like the one that I interpreted in later iterations of separating the sword and shield. The third problem is that the vast majority of the time that I have done this, uh, it actually turns out that when we reach a certain point, uh, John, falls on, or John comes in half shield, I fall under, I go here, if I get this, and don't walk onto his sword while trying to step in, as I cut towards his head, he blocks high, and I cut his arm, but most often people actually don't pull that buckler down to protect their wrist that has been cut. And uh, then it's really hard for me to get the pin, and I don't really feel that I have a huge amount of control here, although I am cutting his sword arm. Um, so this is somewhat problematic. So my newer interpretation is different. I start an underarm, John starts in right shoulder. John steps into half shield, and I fall under the sword and shield. John counterbinds and steps, and I turn my sword so the short edge is towards his long edge and on the side. As he's stepping in, I wind his sword over, and ideally, I cross it up with his buckler. And now, my sword is on top. The problem with this interpretation is this doesn't really look like the picture, but that may be an artistic problem. From here, I push under his arm, and I separate the sword and shield, which actually means I go through this space. So I personally prefer my second interpretation right now because it fits with more of what's going on in the rest of the manuscript. And one other thing that comes up in both of these is in the, in the ch technique of change of sword, it talks about the knucking, and it says that this is sending the sword separately towards the uh, opponent's head. Uh, you can see both this in both of my versions. So we'll start this again. I'm in underarm, John, John steps into half shield. I fall under the sword and shield. He counterbinds and steps. So technique one, boom, I'm setting my sword separately towards his head. Nucking means nodding. So my sword is going up. I turn my hand and my sword is going down, like it's nodding. Uh, so to me, the nodding is possibly a feint using this interpretation. The other interpretation, John steps into half shield, I fall under the sword and shield, he counterbinds the steps, I wind over, and my sword goes down and comes back up. And it's not going separately towards his head, it is going separatingly towards his head. And it is a down and then back up motion, which I think fits the bill of nodding or knucking as well. Continuing on with my two interpretations, uh, the uh, one problem I want to elaborate on with my new interpretation is due to the illustration in the manuscript for the change of sword. And first of all, actually, we'll just bring our swords out so that I can show what I'm talking about. In the illustration, it appears that after the change of sword, the swords are crossed like this. Now, first of all, I don't like a low cross like this anyway because I'm opening myself up to John just thrusting underneath my sword. 
which doesn't seem safe. But uh, my action brings our swords crossed over to the other side. And we'll show that again. John steps in the half shield. I turn my short edge on to get the leverage I need, and I come over and I'm crossed on the other side. Right now, my theory about this is that the illustration is shown in front because that way they can show the person on this side being on top, and that in fact it is intended to be uh, to the back. I could be wrong about that. I think it might just be a perspective issue. But there's one more thing between these two interpretations, which is the counter to those interpretations. So the counter is that if I change sword above, John should thrust using our standard thrust. So I'm starting from underarm. We're going to do the new interpretation first. John steps into half shield. I fall under the sword and shield. He counterbinds and steps. I fall and I change sword above. He steps left and stabs me in the face. Works beautifully. However, using my older interpretation, John steps into half shield. I fall under the sword and shield. John counterbinds and steps. I step back to here, and now John has to thrust as I'm cutting. It's kind of not working the same way. And in fact, John's not protecting his head unless he brings his hands up. If he keeps his hands together, then we're changing into some other sequence. There are things that I can do from there, but none of it really fits with him doing a thrust as a good action from that position. 